coastlines of Namibia and the Cape Peninsula around to Musenberg and along the east coast of South Africa, along to Guadalupe Natal and stretching as far as Mozambique are home to a fascinating bird. African oyster catchers are a resident species of wader. These birds frequent rocky and sandy shores, foraging at low tide for mussels, limpets and other small organisms. At this time of year, the birds are nearing the end of the longest stage in their life cycle, molt, and it is now that we are discovering for the first time the exact time frame for this molt process in the life of the African oyster catcher. And we are doing this with a camera. Molt has for quite a long time been captured through a variety of methods. Much data is collected through ringing or museum specimens. While these are helpful methods for the study of most bird species, in certain scenarios it is possible to use the method of photography. African oyster catchers can be photographed because they spend a good length of time foraging on the shore. Also, they stay within a certain home range on the beach with their partner or group. Imagine you are taking a slow walk surrounded by the most beautiful biome. You are searching for a species that you know very well. You have learned about their habits of nesting and foraging, about their calls and about each stage in their life cycle. You know of a place these birds can be found and you are in that place. It is just you and your study species and you capture this moment on camera. Photography is my favorite form of data collection. With a camera, we can capture moments at all different stages in a bird's life. And this opens us up to a new world of information. There are no nets involved, so there is far less disturbance to the species. Sample sizes can be much greater because we are not limited to recording data only for birds that fly into the nets, but rather for all birds that you may find around you. One of the things that I enjoy most about this project is that because it involves a camera, there is an easy connection with members of the public. Through this and similar projects, the citizen scientist community in South Africa is expanding. Keen photographers have contributed more than 500 photographs to this study and continue to do so. The photographs are received through email correspondence and Facebook birding groups. Supervisors and I have been collecting data along the Western Cape coastline. Some of our favorite spots include Musenberg, Komiki, Sudbato and Robben Island. How do we collect data? The best time to collect malt data is when the tide is low and the birds are foraging. The perfect day will be clear and sunny with the wind blowing towards you so that the birds fly with the wind behind you. This way, you can avoid taking multiple photographs of the same pairs. Weather can be unpredictable, but we get this right most of the time. Essentials include hard-wearing shoes for the rocky shoreline, water, and a digital camera with a fast shutter speed. As you walk along the shore, you need to have a sharp eye to spot an African oyster catcher. When you encounter a pair or a group, remember that you need to distinguish between individuals when the photos are scored later. Take photos of the birds in sequence. It is helpful to have an assistant with you because the birds may not always choose to fly. If you try to get them to fly yourself, you may miss your shot at getting a clear photo of the wings. While you focus your lens on the subject, your assistant can walk towards the birds 
or jump or make the necessary sounds to motivate the oyster catchers to show you their feathers and fly to the next rock. Side profiles of a bird in flight are the easiest to score. You need the wings to be parallel to the lens so that all 10 primary feathers are visible and flat in the image. If the bird is bending its wings like this, then it is difficult to see the proper length of each feather. If the bird is flying directly away from you, this is all you will see. Here are some more examples of photos that are good for scoring molt. These photographs were taken with a Canon 7D Mark II and a 200mm lens with a 2x extender. I used a minimum shutter speed of 640, low aperture and variable ISO depending on weather conditions. As mentioned, our MOLT data has two main sources photographers or citizen scientists who send photographs through from different parts of the coastline, and my supervisors and I who take photographs in the Western Cape, including Robben Island. This data is analyzed using RStudio, a code console and editor that helps the world make sense of data. Provisional estimations of the model suggest a molt duration for African oyster catchers of about 175 days, from the 31st of March to the 24th of September. This table shows the different aspects of the molt period. Primaries 1 to 10 and the wing are in the first column with their corresponding molt parameters in the columns that follow. The sample sizes of records within each stage of molt, pre-molt, in-molt and post-molt, are also mentioned for the 10 primaries and the wing. In this plot, the points represent the right wing primaries of African oyster catchers. I condensed this data so that the PFMG percentage feather mass grown for the wing is visible across the time frame of one year. With the knowledge that this species breeds in the austral summer from October to March, it was interesting to discover that African oyster catchers spend their entire non-breeding season replacing their primary feathers. Without the constraints of migration or the onset of harsh weather conditions, these birds can stretch the energy demands of molt. This way, the molt stage is a lot more manageable and easier in comparison to the way that other shorebirds handle this stage. By increasing their molt period, African oyster catchers can grow good quality feathers while not taking too much strain in flight or experiencing a loss of energy during their everyday activities.
Incorporating photography into our study of the African oyster catchers is most rewarding. I enjoy this type of data collection because the process allows for a high degree of accuracy. Also, the process offers good connection with citizen scientists. I would like to encourage all who are listening to explore methods like this for gathering data. Also, to engage with members of the public, as this encourages the understanding that science is for everyone. Every person can contribute to science. Thank you so much for listening. 